God has plans to prosper you, give you hope and a future too. So let me remind you of what you have the power to do. You can win, live your dreams, reach your goals, be happy. You can make it. Get motivated with Cassandra Hello, you're listening to the Cassandra Mack Podcast, where we maximize success and de-stress from the mess through a biblical lens. Make sure to hang out until the end. I have a special prayer that I'm going to pray just for you. When you get a moment, stop by the website, CassandraMackMinistries.com. Check out our books, inspirational mugs, music, merch, t-shirts, all designed with your mental health in mind to inspire you to live your blessed life. I want to say thank you to those of you who support this ministry with your donations and your financial offering. We could not do what we do without you. And so a big thank you to the bottom of my heart for your faithful giving. Happy birthday to all of you who have birthdays during the month of February. So happy birthday and shout out to wherever you're listening from. Where are you listening to this podcast from? So we are international. We have folks who are listening from Australia, Singapore, Taiwan, Namibia, Canada, London, UK, Ireland, uh, just to name a few, in addition to the USA. Today's podcast is being sponsored by the Soul Fast Workbook. So we are actually on the Soul Fast, which started February 14, 2024. It is not too late, better late than never. So if you want to participate in the 40-day Soul Fast, get the Soul Fast Workbook available at Amazon.com and any Barnes & Noble's bookstore, and you can do the soul fast. So today we're continuing our teaching. We are on part four of when trauma becomes trapped in the soul. And we're talking about the link between resentment and trauma. So a lot of people don't necessarily make the connection between why they feel so resentful, why they often have these pervasive feelings of anger that won't go away why they can so easily go from zero to 100 over something that doesn't fit their level of anger. Why does this happen? A lot of times it is because resentment is trapped or locked in our soul. Remember, the soul is the mind, the emotions, and the will. The will is the seed of our choices. And so one of the effects of trauma is that trauma can make us angry and understandably so. It's common to feel angry and resentful after experiencing a traumatizing incident. And what anger does in that moment is it helps us cope with life stressors by giving us that energy to keep going in the face of danger, in the face of betrayal. So think about a time that you or someone you know was deeply betrayed, right? And it was beyond belief at the level of betrayal, but you still had to foster up the energy to be able to go to work. Maybe you had children or grandchildren depending on you when you had to figure out a way despite what was happening in your personal life and the person that betrayed you deeply, you still had to figure out a way to keep a roof over your children's head and to keep on going. And so even though you were deeply traumatized, that anger energized your ability to keep on going. But the danger is, the danger is that prolonged feelings of anger eat away at our peace of mind, our joy, and our focus. There's a reason why the Bible tells us, in our anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while we are still angry. So when we hold on to anger for weeks, months, sometimes years, it will hinder our ability to have joy, to feel peaceful. And so... 
when we're faced with extreme danger, what happens is that anger helps us survive, right? By shifting our focus into a fight or flight reaction. And this is where we focus all of our attention, all of our thoughts, all of our actions towards survival and safety because in the most traumatizing incident where your life is in imminent physical danger, your mind has to figure out a way to get you to safety. Your mind has to figure out a way to survive. And so that rush of anger is what allows you to be able to fight or to run. And so there is a reason why we get angry. But the key here is when anger uh, stays with us long after we have survived the particular traumatizing incident and it gets in the way of our creativity, our joy, our happiness, our mental well-being, our emotional stability, then it becomes problematic, right? And so with that said, what is the link between trauma and resentment? And so it's important to know that resentment is common, right? It is common among all of us. Every human being on the planet can be susceptible to feeling resentment, especially when someone deeply betrays you, when something happens that is uh, devastatingly unfair. And even though the Bible says that it rains on the just and the unjust, and we know this, we are still human and we are going to have an emotional reaction when unfair or cruel or mean things happen to us. And so resentment is a common and natural reaction to events that are unfair or unjust in which you've been victimized or oppressed by somebody else. And especially in cases of trauma that involves some sort of violence or exploitation, it is very difficult not to stay in resentment. And so resentment is an emotional response to something that we perceive as wrong, uh, an insult, an injury, be it physical, emotional, mental. And if you've been wrong, your resentment is a sign that you clearly understand that you've been wrong and that you do not like, you do not agree with the perpetrator's actions. So your resentment is actually signaling to your mind that what they did is not okay. What they did wasn't right. So it is actually a sign letting you know that you didn't sign up for this, that it is not your fault, that you didn't deserve this, right? And so resentment as a result of traumatizing, of a traumatizing incident is rooted in the sense that we didn't deserve what happened to us. And in fact, no one does. But here's the danger. Here's the danger. The danger about resentment is when it is prolonged and chronic, it can keep us stuck. It can keep us stuck in that period of time, unable to get on with our lives in a way that enables us to keep straining forward towards what lies ahead. It can also cause us to take out our trauma on people who had nothing to do with the particular incident that was traumatizing. And so an example of this is you have someone deeply betray you in your early years, and now all men are dogs or all women are conniving witches. And so it's important to understand that there is a particular man who did the thing to you or a particular woman who did the thing to you, but it is not all men, it is not all women. And so when we decide that everybody is at fault, for the trauma that one individual, right, uh, imposed upon us, even if it was more than one, it wasn't the entire human race. Then what happens is we make everybody pay for what that person did. And we bleed out on other people who were not the cause of the wound. And so I want to point out that resentment is different from anger. It's different from frustration or disappointment. These are all feelings we're going to have in a moment. But here's the difference. Resentment is what you feel when you think about the situation later. So resentment is not the same as anger. You feel the rush of anger in the moment. You may even feel rage in the moment. But resentment is what you feel when you think about the incident later after the incident is over. And so anger can quickly turn into a prolonged Resentment and resentment can quickly turn into chronic rage.
where you go from zero to 100 at the slightest thing. It can turn into anxiety. It can turn into depression. And so that word resent, think about it. It has the word re and sent. And so it literally means to resend the situation back to your mind. So when we are resentful, we are full of resending the traumatizing incident to our mind. We are refeeling all of the emotions over again. And so that's what we're doing when we play a situation over and over and over and over in our head. And of course, our brains don't come with memory deletion buttons, right? But it is one thing to feel an emotion such as anger, and it's another thing to replay that same scene and that same conversation every day of your life, uh, mentally, emotionally, dredging up those hurt feelings or those fearful feelings over and over again. And so there's a connection, right, between resentment and trauma. And so maybe one of the reasons why you find that you are chronically angry, and I'm talking to those who are chronically angry, where you find like you're chronically angry or you go from zero to 100 very easily is usually because of some sort of trauma. And so a lot of times, right, when you're bullied, this is very common, when you are bullied, right, you may develop a personality trait where you become very aggressive and you will come out fighting because you want to make sure that no one ever takes advantage of you ever again. And of course, we need to protect ourselves and set up boundaries, but the difference is in the level of extremeness, right? So here's the hard, cold truth about resentment. When we ruminate day in and day out about all of the hurt that we have been through with a particular person, what we're doing is we actually flood our brains with cortisol, which is a stress hormone that literally makes the brain think that it's under attack. And so in that moment, even if the incident happened years ago, your mind feels like it's under attack. And this is why you feel those feelings all over again, even though the incident might have happened five weeks ago, five months ago, 25 years ago. See, our stress Hormones keep the limbic system activated, which means the thinking rational part of the brain shuts down to prepare to go into survival mode, right? Because we had to survive whatever it was we had to survive, whether the trauma was a physical assault or whether the trauma was uh, somebody just verbally uh, hailing insults of you, had a verbally abusive parent growing up. You had to survive that environment until you were able to get out of that house. And so what happens is when our mind is in that state, it's nearly impossible to focus on anything else except for that attack because you're reliving. Remember, you're resending. When we're resentful, we are full of resending that incident back to the mind. And so you might be at work and you were on a deadline and you may not be able to concentrate like you need to because you are ruminating on that thing that happened a few weeks ago. Or maybe you are a creative and maybe you create art, you create jewelry, you uh, knit, you crochet, you sew, you create music, you play the guitar, the piano, whatever the thing is that you do, whatever the creative endeavor is, right? Maybe you paint, photography, and you find that uh, you're in a dry spell and you're like, boy, I can't create anything. Nothing is coming to me. Maybe you're a writer. You have writer's block a lot. Maybe you do poetry and you write poetry and you're having a lot of writer's block. No ideas are coming to you. Sometimes it is because when we are filled with resentment, remember, it is difficult for the mind to focus on being creative when the mind is focused on survival, even though the incident happened weeks ago, months ago, years ago. And so this makes it very difficult to not only be creative, to focus on what you need to focus on in the moment, to concentrate on the things that are most uh, of most importance to you in that moment, but even to remember simple tasks. And it makes it hard to enjoy the present moment and plan for the future. And so a lot of times when you're stuck and you can't really put your hand to your goals, you're, you're fuzzy and unclear about what you want to do in the future, about what you want to achieve, accomplish, and contribute, a lot of times we don't make the connection, but that has to do with trauma and resentment because the mind is so filled with that. So I want to give you a scripture 
that uh, hopefully will bring you uh, some wisdom concerning, biblical wisdom concerning how you might want to approach this if you find that, you know, when I think about it, I am filled with a lot of resentment. And only you know the answer to the question. There's no judgment here. This is all about freeing ourselves, right? Through Christ Jesus, right? Who the sun sets free is free indeed, but we got to walk in our freedom. It's ours for the taking spiritually, but we live in a physical body, right? We have a physical brain. So we still have to do the work, even though it's there for us spiritually. It's already provided. It's already done. So Ephesians 4 Verse 31 says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And so I truly and firmly believe that uh, this scripture really holds the key to beginning to really begin to let go and release some of the uh, resentment. And if you're doing the soul fast workbook, that is actually going to walk you through the process of releasing unhealthy mindsets that are designed to really derail your destiny, to kill, steal, and destroy your, your faith, your focus, your joy, your happiness. So you will be working through that process in the Soul Fast Workbook. But additionally, let's look at this scripture. So the scripture says, little bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, be put away from you with all malice. So it's interesting that it says to be put away and not prayed away, right? So what this scripture lets us know that this is going to require work, that we can't just be a hearer of the word, but we got to be a doer of the word. It has to be put away, right? And so, of course, we can pray, right? Prayer is the catalyst in the spiritual realm that activates our faith, that not only activates our faith, but that empowers our faith, right? So we ought to pray, but in addition, right, in addition to prayer, we actually have to do something about it. And so we have to put it away. That means we have to make the intentional choice to put resentment away. And so begin to think about what you can do to put resentment away. So it could look like getting yourself into therapy with a, a therapist who has uh, experience dealing with letting go of resentment, helping clients letting go of uh, resentment. It may mean that you may want to get connected to a therapist uh, that can offer you a biblical perspective on how to unpack uh, resentment so that you can really begin to heal the areas of your life that need mending and tending to. So it could look like that. It might look like journaling and really getting very introspective about the inner roadblocks that are holding up your joy that are holding up your peace of mind. So there is not a one size all fits solution. It is really thinking about your life and what it is that you need. It could be a support group, depending on the trauma that you went through for individuals who have gone through exactly what you have gone through so that you are in a safe space with people who get what you have gone through because they have went through the same thing or something very similar. So it could be a support group. There are plenty of support groups online. You may do a Google search. You may put in the thing that it could be uh, adult children who are survivors of narcissistic parents, adult children who are survivors of alcoholic parents. You would put in the particulars because you know what you went through. You know the specific thing. And you can begin to look for support groups and put, put your area, wherever you live, whatever part of the world. And if there's nothing physically for you to physically go with, there are so many support groups that happen, you know, online. But uh, you definitely want to be in some sort, have some sort of introspective practice, whether you're journaling, whether you're getting yourself into therapy, whether you are connecting with a support group that, that is very specific to the thing that you went through so that you were in a place where you feel understood and not just understood, but where you are also getting tools to help you move forward. And so I hope that you found this helpful. And two other things that I would really encourage you to do. Channel your resentment into setting boundaries that support and affirm your self-worth. So we all have different areas in our life where we struggle, right? You know your particular area. So begin channeling 
your resentment into setting boundaries. So a lot of times, right, when we're still struggling with resentment, sometimes it is because the boundary is still being broken in our adult lives that remind us of that time that we went through that particular traumatic incident. And so if you can begin to make the connection, meaning when A happens, I tend to get triggered. Why do I tend to get triggered when my supervisor does X, Y, and Z? And you can insert the thing and you may find that as you really begin to prayerfully uh, contemplate your uh, actions and your reactions and you prayerfully talk to God about it, or you're additionally talking about it in therapy, you may begin to develop some insights and say, wow, I'm responding to this person like they're my parent because I'm still carrying this trauma. But only you can answer that question. There's no way a podcast can answer this for you, a general podcast uh, can answer your specific questions. So that's one thing. Two, channel your resentment into advocacy. Lend your voice to the very cause of helping others who are not as far along as where you are. So you may find that if you were if you were a victim of an assault, you may find that you want to lend your voice to victims of assault because you are a survivor now. You are in a different stage of your healing and you may want to reach back and lend your voice to a cause that fights against the very thing that you have been through. And so that's the way that you can begin to also put uh, bitterness, put, re, uh, zet, put resentment away. So those are some things that you can do. And you are always welcome to book a coaching session, a one-to-one -one coaching session uh, with me. But a coaching session is not the same thing as therapy. So this is why I recommend therapy in terms of mental health treatment, in terms of a diagnosis. But if you are looking for life skills, advanced life skills to really help you navigate your life with biblical wisdom, resilience, and grace, then I would encourage you to book a coaching session. And uh, you can visit the website. The link is in the uh, description box. It's strategiesforempoweredliving.com. That's the business website. And you would click on the link that says coaching and follow the prompts from there if you would like to do one-on-one. -on -one. And again, I want to be very clear, coaching is not mental health therapy, although there are aspects of mental resilience, mental fitness, and emotional mastery and well-being. So if you want to dive deeper, a couple of other things, I would encourage you to become a member of the Cassandra Mack YouTube channel at the second tier or higher so that you have access to our Wednesday Wellness Club meetings where we meet twice a month by telephone conference call and we focus on mental well-being, mental fitness, emotional mastery, and emotional healing through a biblical framework. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, become a member of the YouTube channel at the second tier or high to get access to the Wednesday Wellness Club. The other thing that I would encourage you to do is to pick up the book, Speaking Life Into Your I Am. That is a book that really speaks to who we are as children of the Most High God. One of the things that trauma does is it tears away at our confidence. It tears away at the very fabric of our identity. And we need reminders so that we can walk in the power, the purpose, the prophecy, the providence of who we are in God. And so the book, Speaking Life Into Your I Am, shows you how to affirm the scriptures that speak to our identity in a very practical, pragmatic way. Uh, the book is available at Amazon and Barnes & Noble's bookstores, but the most recent version of all of my books are on Amazon if you want the latest updated version. Uh, version. So let's make sure that uh, we don't forget to pray. Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father God, for giving us biblical wisdom to teach us what to do when we feel overwhelmed with resentment. Your word lets us know in Ephesians 4 and 31 to put away bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking with all malice to put these things away. Father God, it ain't an easy thing. So we ask you to please increase our faith in this area for those who may struggle in putting resentment away. Help us, Father God, to begin to put one foot in front of the other and move forward so that we can begin to walk in purpose and in destiny in a more powerful, authentic, and stronger way. We thank you 
And we seal this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If our ministry has been a blessing to you, please consider giving a financial offering. Every bit helps. Share this podcast. Share the videos. If you have any of our books, write a detailed five-star review on Amazon.com because our books are not just books. They're actually one of the ways that we do ministry because there are so many people who never step foot in the church. You have some people who are completely unchurched and the books that uh, we have are their first introduction to really beginning to understand biblical wisdom with wisdom, resilience, and grace. And then gradually they gravitate towards church. They gravitate uh, towards reading the Bible. But a lot of people may not start that way and we got to be wise to win souls. And so... uh, Definitely share the book. If you have any of my books, take a picture holding up the book. Let me know what the book has done for you. Uh, Tag me, Cassandra Mack. Use the hashtags Cassandra Mack so I can find you on social media. Uh, Cassandra Mack Books, you can use those hashtags. Otherwise, it'd be hard to find you. And then if I find you, we will definitely be using many of those uh, pictures on our website so we will put the picture up on the website so show your book proudly if it has helped you in any way so again you can find out more about our ministry by going to cassandramacministries.com you can always come to church by phone that happens every sunday if you got a phone you can come to church by phone you can worship and fellowship right from your home And uh, every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. For details, go to our website, CassandraMacMinistries.com, and uh, you'll see the flyer with all of the details. So have a blessed month, a blessed day. Let's be a blessing and have have, have an awesome day. You got this. You got this. Because God's got you. Take care. And let it go so you can grow Know that there is peace, joy and healing So you can be whole Got chains of doubt inside you Tearing up your self-esteem But you got the power The power to be free Free from everything Try to steal Your destiny Oh, fast.